Forget about Eddie Munson. It's all about Duke Thomas. Trust me, I wasn't really fully familiar with Duke Thomas prior to this new figure that's coming out of McFarlane Toys' DC Multiverse line, and upon looking it up, I would say we need a little bit more light on the mainstream for this new Robin sidekick to Batman as part of the Bat family. Duke Thomas originally was to be taken up the mantle of Nightwing, however, in the Dark Knight's Death Metal line, he decided to become the Final Knight with the armor here made out of dragon skin, I mean, there was no way that McFarlane was going to pass up on an opportunity to generate a figure on this incarnation. And you can definitely see it here in its 7-inch glory. I would probably say this is one of the more gentler surprises out of the most recent McFarlane toys line because of a number of reasons. For one, the sculpting and the heft. The way that this figure actually feels in hand is definitely not stated well enough through pictures. Uh, it, when you actually feel the figure in hand, the plastic and the utilization of the sculpt is definitely felt c uh, coming through to the fingers. Especially when it comes to the limbs and the torso, there's something about the production of the quality of this figure that feels like it was actually put through the ringer uh, a couple of times. And it actually feels like they were there was actually some consideration and thought into producing, or at least mass producing, this version of the character. And frankly, I feel like that's saying quite a bit considering that those initial pictures really made me feel like this character was going to be a little bit overproduced and over McFarlaneized, especially when it came to those elongated ears. You know, there was something about it that I'm like, okay, maybe enough is enough, all right? There's just so much spikiness that one of these Batman could really have, but feeling him in hand and actually looking at the little texture that's going along with those ears as well as the helmet in front of his face kind of coiling over to the back, it, that makes it look very dragon-esque. It looks like he's got scaling, he's using shells and textures textures of that kind around his armor and around his suit and cowl, it actually transcends really well and translates very well on camera and in person. And so when you see the little bit of texturing and paint decals going along the face as well as the armor overall, it feels really great in hand. I'll probably say the only part that feels a little overproduced is that little spine piece there at the back with the little uh, spikes coming out of it. I feel like maybe that's where we kind of straddle the line of exaggeration and maybe a little bit of the gauntlets, especially with those coiling uh, spikes that you have right there on the side. I know that they're supposed to be elongated to kind of mimic that of the rest of the helmet and the rest of the overall aesthetic of the suit, but that's where I think we do start to teeter a little bit on parody, but at least before we get to laughable natures, like I said, we got a little bit of the scaling and texturing going along the torso, the belt, and good texture going along the armor pieces of the thighs, the sculpting, as well as also the ridges going along the shins of the boot. The boots are arguably one of my favorite boots to come across a Batman figure in a really, really long time. And while we're covering things that I haven't appreciated for a while, the cape. The cape is legitimately cool. It, it, much like I felt with the rest of the production of the figure, they look. it looks like they put a lot of thought and detail and took their time with the cape. Some may argue that maybe it's taking up a little bit of real estate and space around him, but when, again, like, like I mentioned before, when you feel it in hand, it actually feels like they took a parchment or a piece or a fragment of a legitimate cosplay Batman cape uh, strapped it to this figure and made sure to tailor it and customize it properly because the texturing and the actual creases as well as the feel for the cape itself never feels flimsy. It feels quality. I would probably say the only little nitpick that I can come up with is once we get to the shoulders, they're able to replicate more of that detailing and texture that you can see a little bit coming through uh, the torso and it looks really great as far as paint decals and textures are concerned, but it does hinder a little bit of the articulation that we'll cover momentarily and while we're within the general chest area that chest symbol is not exactly one of my favorites it stands out as far as coloring and you know appeal to the overall center portion of the figure but it's also one of the lesser cooling bat symbols just my opinion but what comes back around as far as really cool and very brand new at least brand new to me uh, as far as innovative things to bring forth to the McFarlane line in the future is the articulation now like I mentioned before you you're going to have some traditional stuff and also some hindrances that are covered uh, a little early on here. You have the head that's 
is technically able to rotate 360 degrees, but it does feel uh, like it's giving me a little bit of resistance due to the way that the collar is molded because of that encroaching shoulder piece of the cape. And likewise, the shoulders are not going to be able to rotate vertically 360 degrees. They can only lift about that high up, but you do get a really good amount of extension towards the sides that feel very smooth and nice to the touch. And then, of course, you're going to have your bicep swivels that are pretty standard as well as your two joints at the elbow that are able to fully bend all the way up. But then we get to what I think is a very innovative thing that I just, like I said, haven't seen in a while. It's probably my first time ever seeing this on a McFarlane and they may have been used, utilized before, but this is my first time coming across it here on the channel. And that's these wrist joints. These wrist joints, they are something else because this time they decided to not use the typical ball joint that they often use for the ankles or the joints. And what it is, it's basically this joint that's split in half. So it's not the traditional ball joint that just has the peg at the end and uh, at one end to the end next. It's almost like it's just splitting down the middle, two completely different pieces that actually move in tangent with the bodily piece that's moving, which in this case is the wrist. So you can kind of see it there and it is ratcheted bending inwards and outwards, but only one half of that joint is actually moving. And so when you rotate it, you get rotation either at the base of the palm or at the base of the forearm across the joint. And there's just something about it that just feels robust and never flimsy, and it doesn't feel as frustrating as the typical ball joints. And we're going to go ahead and skip a little ahead and tackle the ankles, because the ankles are actually utilizing a similar joint as well. You have kind of like, it kind of resembles a ball joint, but it's not really, because again, it's ut utilizing that tech, if you will, of splitting right down the middle and only one piece moving in tangent with the ankle in a ratcheted uh, form of movement up and down. And then when you get to rotating, the entire joint is rotating with the foot. And because of that, it just feels robust and stiff while at the same time not really being frustrating to move. It feels like it's going to be able to uh, last quite a bit of while without ever coming across too loose. And because of that, I'd say that for a little while, this is probably going to be my figure with my most favorite of wrist and ankle joints that I've come across as a collector. Then we get to the torso where unfortunately we do get a little bit of hindrance due to the way that the costume and the scaling across his abdomen is designed. You do have a little bit of movement from left to right via the waist joint and the mid torso joint, but not a whole lot in terms of crunching. He's only able to flex a little bit towards the back, but not a whole lot into the inwards portion of his body. You then get traditional top leg joints that are able to move the legs forwards and backwards about that much as well as extensions properly to the side that don't feel hindered at all and your typical two joints at the knees that are able to allow the bottom part of the leg all the way up like so and they are ratcheted so you do get that and then of course the traditional toesies that feel great in hand due to the way that the feet just feel very tactical and bulky. Aside from the traditional McFarlane accessories such as the black base and the collectible card, McFarlane decided to throw in, of course, the only thing that he could possibly have, not only because it's in line with the canonical late nature of the character from the comics, specifically the Death Metal series, but also because it's McFarlane and there's no other excuse to not throw in the most metal accessory, at least one of the most metal accessories that they could possibly uh, throw into the bundle, and that is, of course, the Parallax, a.k.a. a guitar shaped like an axe with his uh, color scheme transcending through in the metallic silver and muted navy blue. And even though I personally would have liked, liked some touches of some kind of paint decal to emphasize a little bit of the strings along the neck and uh, middle portions of the guitar here, what they are able to sculpt out and get right with the metallic silver that is on the accessory looks rather nice. It's a little on the flimsy side when it comes to that neck, but they kind of have to because it's made out of that rubberized uh, plastic. But when you get to the actual girthy, pointed nature of the spikes and the blades along the side here of the actual body of the guitar, that's where things feel really, really awesome in hand. And, of course, he's going to be able to pose really well with him in the most, like I said, hardcore metal action. And I can go ahead and sound like a broken record and mention that it would have been nice to have had an extra set of hands with one open and one closed because unfortunately he does come with one open hand 
that's going to be the the default one that you're going to put the guitar in, whereas the other one is fisted. And th that causes a little bit of an OCD issue on my part, only because you want to be able to pose him with either some kind of punching stance or some kind of guitar playing stance with his fingers kind of molded in a way like he's just hitting a, a, him picking with the guitar pick, uh, almost like he's playing some kind of tune. But unfortunately, that's not really what they threw in here. And it just harkens back to all those other complaints that I've had in past McFarlane. So it's getting a little old and tried to re-mention that again. Would have been beneficial here. But at least let's look at the positive. And it's a big positive, And that's that this is arguably one of my favorite surprises of the year thus far when it comes to the new McFarlane toys line. Because I'll admit it. He did not necessarily look the most appealing when I saw pictures of him. But man, feeling him in hand, feeling the heft, feeling the quality and the actual statuesque look of the character while at the same time still coming across as a really worthwhile figure with great articulation, new joints that feel innovative that I would like to be carried over to future McFarlane's, and just an overall sense of presence and badassery to him make me feel like this is one of my favorites of the McFarlane line and one of my definite must-keeps of Batman figures that I have in my collection. If you guys want to add him to yours, make sure to utilize the links in the description to help with the channel quite a bit, and you get to add your own Duke Thomas Batman in the process. And I definitely recommend that you do so because I am bringing ratings back, and I'm gonna give this guy an enthusiastic and surprising 9 out of 10. I definitely recommend him if you're a huge fan of McFarlane, if you guys are getting maybe just a little bit of the fatigue with more Batman, I'd understand, but this is one that was able to surprise me and was kind of em empathizing with that notion. And yet here I am thinking to myself, if they can come up with some kind of gold variant or something like that, I might be on the lookout for that one as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys liked the video, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down. Comment below what's your guys' favorite Batman McFarlane so, so far. What's the most surprising one that you thought of yourself? That looks silly, but once you had him in hand, you completely turned around and it became one of your favorites. Let me know in the comment section below. Hit the subscribe button if you guys want to check out more McFarlane's in the future. And as always, guys, stay humble. I'll see you on the next one.